it was quite weird how the Burmese national, nationalism worked. One of my experience was that in before 1962, many Shans were already learning Burmese. They were already ready becoming Burmanites, wearing longjis, the Burmese skirts. But then, in after the military takeover, they issued an order, a decree, that all students must wear longjis, the sarongs. And then uh, they made restrictions on learning Shan. The policy, in fact, backfired because Shans began to think, what's wrong with wearing uh, Shan baggy pants? Mm -hmm. huh? What's wrong with learning my own Shan? So that was how I came to learn my own mother language. In fact, if had they not uh, imposed orders, each decrease like that, we would have unknowingly become Burman. Burman already. <laughs> yeah? You didn't speak Shan before that? Only sometimes when we meet people coming from the villages, yeah? our relatives, but never among the family. Uh, we were speaking Burmese. I was. I was composing Burmese songs. And what is it like now in Shan State? Some of them continue to be Burmanized, of course, but the Burmese restrictions on the learning Shan, producing uh, publications in Shan and all that make people uh, become more ethnic conscious. Like I said, what's wrong with my culture, what's wrong with my language? They shouldn't have done that. And if future Shans should do that to the non-Shans in the Shan state, it will be the same reaction. When they issued that order, many, I remember many of our Shans, they, they were angry because they were these longjis and then they had to uh, wear also belts too, because they, they were not. <laughs> now they they they've got used to it. <laughs> I was wearing longies in those days, but after they issued these order, I never wore longies except as a necessity. Mm -hmm. huh? Did you start writing um, songs in Shan? Afterwards, after they issued the these orders.